All right, AJ Twist back here. But we're gonna take apart this arcade stick. There are various screws around this, mostly hex. And there's different size hexes throughout this whole thing too. This is the scariest part, is where the uh, the button lays here. Uh, before we do that too, maybe we should take off the key ring right here. It is free. So these are uh, M3 screws. So that's how this is attached. This apparently came off already. I was attached to this button. I just literally wrapped it in some electrical tape. Here it says this is a magenta stick. Uh, this is just a normal uh, five pin. And then this is for power. And this is powered by the uh, brook board itself. This thing is hard to get off. And see if we can pry it out. Pry it out softly here. Nope. Uh oh. Yeah, I might have ruined it. Ugh. That was annoying, but we got that out finally. This thing is strong. So strong. Clear, transparent paper for this art right here. All right, so the inside here, we got the LEDs right here. Um, we got our other buttons, and here's our ribbon. So let's take apart the bottom here. That's all that is. Put some um, little rubber uh, slides on here so uh, I don't scratch my desk because I think I already did that once. A little bit of a sleeve on this one right here that has just the uh, cables uh, for the stick, you know, the directional inputs and then the power. And then that runs through here and then inside of here, everything else goes inside of here into this other ribbon. So this is the uh, option or start button, home button, and the share, AKA select. And I have all that running through here. And then also all the LED wires up here to uh, also run into this ribbon. So this ribbon has what? Seven, eight, nine, uh, plus another seven as what? Math, 16 uh, wires running through this ribbon right here to, to get over here. So let's take this apart even further. Oh, interesting. So this is one frame right here. So this thing literally runs, this uh, ribbon here actually runs right against the rail. But inside of here, there's like a little channel right here that I made. So this is where the ribbon uh, cable actually lives, right in this channel here. And then the rails would be like right above it, right up here. This holds the acrylic on top. That, that acrylic holds the lever. The bottom here, uh, this also holds the bottom acrylic. These are bigger, those are like M4s. And then down here, these are the screw holes that go into these right here to hold these two pieces together. And then this wall, there's screws all throughout the wall right here. And that holds together this whole thing like this. Let's take the wall apart. There are no brass inserts for the walls. You really need to think about what orientation, what position you're printing your pieces in. But when I printed these walls here, it had to print like this bottom or this side down, this facing upwards. Not print it like this, because otherwise you would see lines going across like this. Um, all those print lines like for example on here you can see all these lines going horizontally so that's how you know the print was like this um, I try to use an ironing technique where the printers print head will kind of just not extrude any filament it will just run over each piece again uh, to smooth it out uh, it worked really well on this inside here you can definitely tell there's all type of zigzags and over extruding happening here you can see all this print here a little hole I have here for the keyhole, but this is the where the print bed touched. I had to also have support right here because it printed like this. So bottom print bed here, support underneath this to hold this. Uh, this whole little section right here was more uh, deep in there to um, make room for these corners. So it'd be like this. All right, let's just, just for fun, let's go further with this. So here's one whole piece right here. 
this black piece, print it like bottom right here, print it upwards like this. And this would be the top that it, it printed out. And these channels are down here. So yeah, and then uh, left these little holes in here. So those screws that hold the wall will be able to go on there. And these corner pieces, and these words sit in the corner right here. And these printed upwards like this. So this was on the print bed on the bottom and print it up like that. And this is the top of it up here. And the reason I had to print it upwards and not even lay it flat down or anything like that is because if I did, there would have to be support to be printed underneath it and this wouldn't be as smooth as, as it currently is because um, supports can really just make a, a print just look awkward like this one. Why this whole thing isn't printed in one piece like this? Because I wouldn't be able to lay this flat and have this be smooth up here. You know, it would have to be print like this and it would might print support to support these cobblestone design that I put into this. Uh, I could also, if I wanted to, I can go in here and like sand stuff, you know, put in some filler there and start sanding stuff down to get it smooth. That, that's another option that you can go. I didn't want to do all that for this. Anyways, continuing, we're looking at this build here. Um, this center piece here, I think I call it like the frame. Uh, here's that key loophole, so it's all part of the frame. This one looks like it was printed like this. So this was the bottom on the, of the print. This is the print bed piece, and it printed upwards like this. Uh, I believe there were supports on the key ring to hold it up because it is floating in midair. Probably had uh, some support in the key ring hold too. And I believe it's because of these LEDs is why this is the bottom of the print bed and this is the top of the print. Uh, so that can be held up and not have to have uh, support on the bottom of this. Let's go to the other side now, start taking that apart. There's another like four pieces here, five pieces I think. This side only had like three pieces, right? It had this one black piece, this one frame in the middle here and then the two outer frame edges and then just a the blue wall around it. This one has more than that going on here. And actually there's no screw holes to get to this. So everything to take this apart is probably on the other side. So we need to flip it around. Ah, this has been the scariest part because this is acrylic, right? So here's the acrylic piece with these holes drilled out. This is a top piece, mostly, it serves two purposes it's support and it's design to, to kind of hide this because imagine if it actually this part doesn't look too bad if it was like that right uh, looks looks all right but looks too plain for me so this piece made it just look a little cooler right uh, but also uh, like I said it kind of serves support so this can really just go down because this wasn't thick enough you know it was either print this thicker or um, get thicker acrylic and then uh, we got this going on here, which has some screws right here, because this is even more support to, to hold these buttons down so they don't shift so much. So right now they're not shifting. I have not taken this stick apart since right before, maybe like a month before Evo. All right, so this is the scary part now. Well, it won't come up, you know why? Because. Um, it's attached in all types of weird ways underneath with the brook board. So the brook board is just holding itself up with all these wires and stuff. But this is what it was like, like this, right, right, right. Uh, this side was the face down part, I believe. Yeah, and this is this is the face up part when it printed. One thing you can do with 3D printers is put some glue stick down to make sure the print actually sticks. So all this is just impressions of glue stick. And here, this is where the brick board sat and got some more brass inserts right here to hold that in. Um, no brass inserts on that because it's in here to hold that down like that. This here is my own custom PCB that I made. Contacts right there, those are the wires soldered onto this, and then those wires go underneath here into the brook board here. This PCB, bam, right here. Looking like they're holding up pretty good though. 
So the idea with this was to have something, um, a mechanism where this can just slide in here like this. This is hard to get in, bam. And then if I wanted to maybe have a different set of buttons, this will slide out and then maybe like a four button layout, bam, right there. Uh, I, I want my six button layout again, you know, pull this out and then slide this back in. Bam. But these here kind of uh, make it hard. These are really strong, but sometimes they're uneven. As you can see, this pin's a little bit lower than everyone else. And if they all push up hard, but this one isn't pushing up hard enough, then you lose connection with one of these uh, pins that it's trying to touch. So that was the issue I was having with this. This is the final design that I made, but I never made a slide mechanism for it. This bridge, this is the last addition that I made to make sure it pushed on it enough so everything made contact. And there's uh, screws that hold this down right here as well, which I'm not gonna take apart right now. But let's get this whole um, frame out. But as you can see there, the blue ribbon right here that holds all those wires, all those, what is it, 16 wires or whatever, pass from underneath the rail right here. You can see it coming in right there. Another channel I printed into this piece and it comes right here and then that's where it connects into the brick board here. So this piece, very important piece. This piece took me forever to design because I had to make sure that it will support it pretty safely and pretty sturdy all the way around. It also needed to somehow fit the brook board with this USB piece sticking out right here. And these pins on the side over here, I wanted to make sure that everything fit in here. I wanted to make sure these were thick enough. Thinking about it now, I don't think I needed this wall to be this thick. I think I needed it to fit these screw holes right here. Um, same thing on this side. This is also way too thick right here. This could probably be a little bit thinner to help save some room. And again, I think it's so thick to accommodate uh, this USB to, uh, what is it, USB-B to USB-C port right here. The inserts that are inserted into the 3D print here, I think it needed to be, this whole wall needed to be as thick as those inserts, those brass inserts, because uh, that's also held in right here by some screws. And this piece needed to have so much pressure pushing down in it to make sure it doesn't move. But also, if I push these buttons down, this whole board might kind of flex a little bit. And if it flexed too much, the buttons wouldn't be able to come up again because the acrylic top half might catch it and then rub against it and the buttons would get kind of stuck. So I, I had to make this piece right here thicker so it can support some of that pressure. And I needed this to be thinner to fit this USB port to come in right here. And everything needs to be this thin because I was going for that 40 millimeter thickness. But then this thing is even thicker on the top because of all these uh, other layers. We got this black piece that goes on top right here, right? And then we got this gray piece for uh, the artwork or the design. And then we got the acrylic that, that goes on right here. So these rails have inserts Got a couple extras in there in case I want to use those. But then just a normal M3 or M2 screw right there to go into that. So that's what's holding this whole piece together. And it also needed to be super flat so this can close, especially on this other side over here. These buttons were hard to get in because uh, just the way I printed it. Again, I could, I could probably print more room here to get these uh, these screws that go around them all the way. Uh, they're also soldered. All right, let's see if I can quickly put this back together now. Because I think I got over everything I wanted to go over and show on this. Anyone has any questions, just feel free to ask. And this is the moment of truth right here. Yeah, see, that's getting stuck now. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. But this one button gets stuck. See, it can easily shift in here. That looks good now. Looks good, looks good, 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 good. All right.
Now we can organize the wires in the bottom and get the brickboard screwed in. So one reason for the design is not to really depend on these screws that I put here with these inserts, but also it kind of depends on the acrylic that's put across it too. These two pieces are connected with the acrylic, so the acrylic piece that goes over on the bottom of it is as extra support. This rail piece is also part of the whole support structure, right? Um, so that's the other reason why I'm okay with using these small screws, because these pieces out here are mostly to protect the railing, the wiring, and to be able to attach a wall on here on the outside. Um, over here on this side though, I had the thicker screws that went in there, and that was because uh, the rails are attached to this piece on the outside and not the inside piece. Uh, so I need that that bigger piece to be structurally supported. So I used the thicker M screws on there. And, but again, you know, again, acrylic piece out here is going to support the overall frame too. Yeah, because we need to connect these wires. So hopefully I didn't damage these wires too much. Only thing I'm concerned about is causing a short because there's so much wire exposed. I'm gonna remake it. So I have a bunch of these little doodads for wire connectors. I think this is what I need. Yeah. Oh, it's stuck again. <laughs> some crimping wire made so now this should be able to plug into this pretty simply cool that's nice plugged in there and this needs to be plugged in to that thing down there So it's basically back together. This is how it may look if I didn't have any walls on it. It'll just be clear, black stripiness with no design on it. Clear again right here. That could have been a possibility. That's what it looked like on the top and on the side. But we went with the walls to kind of hide a lot of that. Let's get these walls back on. That's me taking it all apart and rebuilding it. This video actually took me over an hour to record, but uh, hopefully I cut it down to even shorter than that. And then we should make sure these buttons work. Good, all right. So the stick works. So that's our square, triangle, X, circle, and then like L2 or R2, L1, L2, or whatever the other side is. And then uh, these are the input sticks. Cool, all right, everything works. How about start, home, and select, or option, or share, whatever that is. But yeah, looks like everything works, which is a good sign. My buttons don't feel like they're getting stuck either. So it looks like we successfully took this apart and put it back together. All right, maybe I'll go practice some um, Street Fighter now or something like that. But yeah, that's um, that's the build there. So now you can see everything that went into this guy. If I start making a new one of this, just give me give me a 
give me like a couple months because I need to just take a break from the split design. Thank you so much, all the comments, um, all the views I got on my previous video. This is awesome. It's been great to kind of just have people look at this and see it and, and kind of like it. Like I just thought it was, you know, just like whatever. Because <laughs> I've just been working on it for so long. It's just like, oh, it's just done. Uh, but thank you so much, guys. All right, I'm out for now. I'll hopefully see you guys soon.